Once you get a lot of source files, it's very helpful to organize them into various subdirectories. Traditionally, when you have a lot of source files built into different subdirectories, you build them with a recursive make. That just means you call make on each subdirectory. Now, the audit tools do support this. You can add a subders entry in the top makefile.am, and various other mechanisms will let you do this, but you shouldn't. Recursive make is quite traditional, but it's a bad idea. It's often wrong, it's harder to maintain, it's slower to do. There's a nice paper by Peter Miller called Recursive Make Considered Harmful that explains some of the problems of this. It's far better, it may be counterintuitive, but it's far better to just use one big makefile.am and a non-recursive make. Now with a non-recursive make, you still put your files in subdirectories, but when you modify your configure.ac, you should modify am init auto make to add an option called subdir.object dash objects. That way objects are placed in their subdirectories along with the source files. That's important in case you have the same source file name in different directories. And you also need to modify ac underscore config underscore source because we're going to move the source file that we're using as the safety check. And of course change your makefile.am and you simply list the new location. So if you put something in subdirectory SRC, you need to say, you, I put it in SRC slash, and so on. So now let's use subdirectories using a non-recursive make, which is really quite easy. Let's make a directory, a subdirectory, and move some files in there. But let's not use MV. Let's use get MV, and that way we'll simultaneously tell get that we're moving these files so we can keep track of them. I don't, don't have many files. I'll remove the old object files that we created. Um, since I don't have many files, I'm not going to create more subdirectories, but what I'm showing here will work when you create subdirectories and subdirectories and sub sub subdirectories and so on. So we still need the AC local flags and so on, but we've moved the source files. That's it. Just need to tell the, that the sources have moved. Now, the same is true for configure.ac. Well, it'd help if I spelled it correctly. Now, if you remember earlier, there's a safety check to make sure a file is there. Well, we've moved that file, so we need to tell it that. Now, autom in automake, the initialization of automake, we need to give it another option, the subdir dash objects option. Oops. And that way object files will be created in the same directory that the original source file is. That's important if the same file name might occur more than once in different subdirectories. And we've done that. Make work just fine. So we'll do a git and of course I can still run it. So I'll do a git commit. All right, and I can even do a make this check to make sure that this will distribute correctly, even though we've organized it, reorganized it, and it works just fine. Another major component of the auto tools is libtool, which lets you handle libraries in a portable way. To initialize libtool, simply add an lt underscore init to your configure.ac file, and then create your makefile.am using it. In this particular example, we're saying that in lib, we're going to install a libtool library. That's what LT libraries means. You'll notice the .la extension. That's the abstract extension for a libtool library. It extracts away from the actual extensions, which are different between different systems. The include headers uh, lets you install header files. And you'll notice that you can actually create a program that uses a library at the very bottom here with uh, the LD add. Not shown here, you should also make a package config file with a .pc extension. I won't get into that here, but there's lots of documents I'll tell you to do that. The process of changing a program's build system to use the auto tools is often called auto confiscation. 
To start auto confiscation, you should probably use the AutoScan program. It reads your existing files and creates a configure.scan file, which is basically a draft configure.ac. Look at it, make some changes, and then when you like it, change that file name to configure.ac and that should get you started. Running it on this demo will put all sorts of useful things that you might add that I haven't mentioned. Things like adding an AC prog install, which looks for a useful install program. And again, AC prog awk will look to find an awk. I don't have time to go through all of the information about the auto tools, but here are some style rules that will help keep you out of some trouble while you're editing your configure.ac file. First of all, you should use as underscore if and as underscore case, not if find case ESAC. These tell autoconf what's conditional. To pass a literal parameter, including something with square brackets itself, pair of square brackets, surround it with a second square bracket pair. So for example, AC underscore AC message underscore error could take those parameters and that would work. The second pair don't have to be directly inside the first pair, but it's probably a good idea to do so. You need to use AC underscore lang underscore source to identify code snippets. And you should prefer the word test, not square brackets, for shell conditionals. Beware of obsolete information. There's a lot of obsolete information about the auto tools, but a lot has been changed. In particular, don't start with the GNU AutoConf AutoMake or LibTool book. It's often called the GOAT book. It was a great book in 2000. The problem is that it's now a bad place to start because so much has changed. It's, it's useful, but only after you've read other more modern information. Documentation in general is probably obsolete about AutoConf if it talks about creating a configure.in instead of configure.ac, if it talks about invoking tools by hand like AC local or auto header instead of just running auto reconf, if it uses the AC local.m4 file directly instead of the m4 directory, or really any documentation written before about 2006. There's a whole lot of this obsolete information and while it might be useful after you know more, it's a terrible place to start. Here's some places for useful information. Open Isthmus's Auto Tools Info has some short how to's for common cases. Jess Higgins' Adventures on Auto Confiscation has a little story uh, that's interesting to read. The Auto Tools Mythbusters talk about some very specific issues that you might have and how to deal with them. Uh, John Calcote's book, Auto Tools, is a much more modern book. That's If you need a book, that's probably the book you want to look at. The using GNU Auto Tools slides is helpful, and of course the GNU's, GNU reference manuals on AutoConf, AutoMake, and LibTool. Those manuals are a little more of a reference material, and it's a lot easier to understand them once you've read some of this other material. So thanks for watching. If you want more information, please see my website at www.dwheeler.com.